May the love of our God, the power of his word, always be with us, always motivate us, always strengthen us. For Jesus' sake, amen. The word of God that we consider this morning from the book of Psalm, Psalm 139. We're going to read verses 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Please be seated. When you stop to think about it, it's absolutely amazing how much things change. Take the first computer. Do you know anything about the first computer? It was eight feet high. It was three and a half feet wide. It was a hundred feet long. It weighed 27 tons. Now, we carry computers in our pocket. We wear them in our wrist. They sit on our desk. Well, what happened? How come that changed? We know it didn't just morph, it didn't just evolve into something more complex and small. Someone had to work and tinker with that thing over the years to get what we have today. And yet, what do people say about the human body? The people say about human body that it simply evolved, that it just kind of like happened. Something as complex as a human body just evolved or just happened? And the human body is complex. Did you know? This is really fun to look up all this stuff. Did you know that the human body has the veins in our body? All the arteries and stuff like that? We've got in our body 60,000 to 100,000 miles of veins in our body. Our heart beats on average 100,000 times a day. The best human eyesight looking up into the heavens can see 2.4 million light years away. That's a 14 with 19 zeros behind it. That's how many miles the best eyesight can see. One of our best nerves in our body can pass a message along at 130 yards per second, or 268 miles an hour. We've got six quarts of blood. I hope, I hope this is right, Dr. Schaefer and Dr. Schaefer. Just Wikipedia or whatever, okay? Uh, our body has six pints, or is it quarts? Now I can't remember. Pints? Something. Pints of quarts, whatever. Quarts of blood. And, and that blood runs through our body three times a minute. And so that means our blood is traveling 12,000 miles a day. And yet people will say of our human body that this thing just kind of slowly over time came into existence. That's like taking a computer, putting it on our desk, and saying, I'm going to sit here and watch you for the next 20 years and see what you ultimately become. We know it's not going to change. And yet that's what people say about the human body, that it just kind of morphed into something so complex. And maybe that's why people don't really respect life. Worldwide, a million suicides a day. Every 40 seconds, someone in this world commits suicide. Worldwide, 878,000 murders a day. No, a year, excuse me, sorry. That's a year. And 1.2 million abortions a year. Maybe these statistics would change just a little bit if people appreciated life. And there's only one way to gain appreciation for life, and that's through God's holy word. And in these verses, the Lord leads us to appreciate life, as he reminds us of the origin of human life, and as he reminds us of the purpose 
for human life. The origin for human life is laid out very clearly for us in the very first chapter, the very first book of the Bible, where, where we simply read that God said, let us make man in our image. In the very next chapter of the book of Genesis, God spells out for us how he created that first male. He formed him out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living being. Then he took one of man's ribs, and out of that rib, he formed and he fashioned a woman. And he told those first people, Adam and Eve, he said, Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to fill the earth. I want you to increase. I want you to have children. And that's how every succeeding generation came into existence. God is the ultimate origin of human life. And that's what the psalmist says in these verses, and he puts it so, so interestingly. He says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Isn't that just a beautiful way to describe the origin of life? God handcrafted, God handcrafted every human being in their mother's womb. In other words, every human being is a separate piece of art. And he says it again in these verses when he says, when I was made in the secret places, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, the, the secret places, the depths of the earth, reference to the womb. We can't see in the womb. Now we can, I suppose, back then they couldn't. But we couldn't see the formation. We couldn't see the slow development of the body in the human womb. But I think the point is unmistakably clear. God is the one who creates, who fashions, and who forms every human life in the womb. And for some, that's the rub. The rub is that they just don't understand that what God knit together in the womb is a human life. They rather see it as a, a blob of tissue that has really no value and can be disposed of at the whim of the mom or the dad. And so let's just understand a couple of points that God makes about that, that child that he knit together in the womb. Under the fifth commandment, God affords protection for that unborn baby. In the book of Exodus, we're told that if two men are fighting, and one of them hits a pregnant woman, and she gives birth prematurely, and that unborn baby dies, you are to take life for life. God protects the unborn baby under that fifth commandment. God reminds us that that little tyke in the womb is a human being when he had King David write that he was sinful from the time his mother conceived him. In other words, every human being inherits from their parents a sinful nature, just like they inherit eye and hair and skin color. And the only thing that's sinful is a person. The pew on which you're sitting, the hymnal that you are holding, the bulletin that you are reading from, that's not sinful, that's stuff. It's not sinful. The only thing that's sinful is a human being. And that's the origin of life from God, knit together in the womb, protected under the fifth commandment, called sinful. And yes, yes, we're sinful from the time our mother conceived us, and yet we would say with with the psalmist, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When you stop to think about the human body, how complex it is, and you realize, yes, this is awesome. I have to praise God for this gift of life and this human body. I mean, think about it again. You just think about that human body, a heart that beats and never has to be charged like our phones every two or three days. Lungs that just work. While we're sleeping and know nothing else of what's going on around us, our lungs continue to function without being told or plugged in at night. We cut ourselves. We break a bone. And yeah, we'll do some, some doctoring for it, but in the end, the body heals itself. And our teeth. At the right time, those little baby teeth pop out, and right behind them, what? God's got these big teeth ready to pop out at the proper time. We don't even think about our hands, do we? But, but how you can just pick, you don't even think. 
You don't even have to look. You can pick things up. You can set things down. Your thumb. Hawkeye on MASH one time went off on the thumb. He was a doctor on MASH, by the way. And how the thumb just goes all over the place. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We recognize from God's holy word that we are a handiwork of God, crafted by God, lit together by God, given life by God. That's where all life originates. It originates with God. And yet, maybe sometimes we adopt that terminology of the world. And we say, it's my body. We say, it's my life, and as a result, what? I can do with it what I want. And so, because we want, we abuse our body and our life with alcohol or drugs, with caffeine or nicotine. We harm our bodies purposely as we slice our forearms, our wrists, because we're depressed as we engage in, in, in sinful sex and exposing ourselves to disease and sickness. All of a sudden, we've got this unexpected, unwanted pregnancy and we'll be inconvenienced if this thing comes to term. Or we're not going to be able to afford having a baby, so we sit there and think, hmm, how can I solve that problem? Sometimes our life just really stinks. And we get to a point of depression that we've never been in before and we just don't even want to go forward and we've got no friends and, and life just really, really stinks and we go, hmm, I wonder how I can solve this problem. And then we get old. And we can't do any of the things that we used to do and we feel worthless and we feel helpless and no way am I going to ever live in a nursing home. And we go, hmm, I wonder how I can solve this problem. Did you know that, that the, the age of males that commit suicide is the greatest, 85 and older? And praise God, we're all here. Praise God, none of us have acted on those thoughts. I mean, there are times when we no longer appreciate the gift of life. When we don't remember that God is the originator of life. And when we want to take matters into our own hands and we thank God that we're still all here. And that we haven't acted on any of those sinful thoughts that we've had. But then we need to realize, in God's mind, the sinful thought is equal to the sinful action. Right? If we hate, we're a murderer. If we covet, we're a stealer. If we lust, we're a rapist. And God's feelings against the sinful thought is the same as against the sinful action. He hates it, he's angry, and he's going to punish the sinful thought just like he punishes the sinful action with death and eternal damnation. And that's a terrible thought. But it's a reality. But here's another reality. God who gave you life wants you to live with him in heaven. And so what he did is he knit together a little body in the womb of a virgin named Mary for his son Jesus. He knit a perfect body a body that had no sin. But as the Bible says, it became sin for us. In his body and in his life, a Savior Jesus, the very Son of God, never once committed a sin. And yet he was cursed for the sinful thoughts and the sinful actions that you and I have and do. And you know what that meant for him? It meant that in his human body, he was pierced and crushed for our iniquities and transgressions. It meant that on a real rugged cross that he suffered the very hell that you and I deserve for our sins. It meant that he died a 
most grotesque, inhumane, undeserved death on a cross for you, for me. God did that to his son because he loved you that much. God did that to his son so that he could call you his sons and his daughters so that each and every one of us could stand at the foot of the cross forgiven so that each of us could rise someday from the dead with a new glorious body like our Savior Jesus Christ and ascend to the glories of eternal life in heaven. That's the saving and the forgiving love of our God. And now our God, who gives us life, gives purpose to our life. In these verses, he just says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Appreciate life, not just because it originates with God, but because God has given every human life a purpose. He's got our days planned out for us even before he knew us together in our mother's womb. He knew what our eighth day would be like, our 88th day, our 888th day, our 8,888th day. He knew what it was going to be like. He told that to Jeremiah when he called him as a prophet. He said, before I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet. And then Jeremiah shared that with the nation of Israel. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. God has a purpose for our life. And you know what the number one purpose for our life is? Do you know what the number one purpose for our life is? It's to be here, in his house. Every opportunity we have to hear his word is to sit in our homes every day, taking five minutes, five minutes, opening up the Bible and reading a psalm or reading from the Gospels or reading Romans or reading one of the epistles. Because when we do that, we're going to be amazed. We're going to see God remind us that his love for us is higher than the heavens are above the earth. We're going to be reminded that God has taken our sins and buried them in the depths of the sea. That he has called us to be his children. That he wants us to live with him in heaven. And he's made it possible through the death of his son Jesus Christ. And through our spirit work faith in his son Jesus Christ. And when we know that love and when we experience the joy of that forgiveness, then we can carry on in life, even when it stinks. Because we know we have a powerful friend walking next to us every single day of our life, a powerful friend who is our God. You know what the second purpose is in our life? No. It's to share. It's to share what we know about God. In the Bible, we're told, you will be my witnesses. We're told that God wants us to declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. And every day, God is going to give us an opportunity to share. Maybe it will be with that person who feels useless, worthless, and friendless. Maybe you'll bring that young couple or that young lady into our life who's had an abortion. Maybe it'll be that old person that used to run like the wind but now walks with the walker. Who used to see 14 with 19 zero behind it miles into the heavens and now can't hardly see. God has given us a purpose in life, and that's to share the love of God. And when we understand the love of God, that is something that we want to share. 
when sin dogged us and depressed us. What a joy to have God say to us, I forgive you. When we were going through the darkest period of our life, when we were sunk into depression, what a joy it was to have God say to us, don't worry, I got this. I got this. And I have a plan for this. And I will bring blessings out of this. And when our health was on the fritz, and age finally caught up with us, and we lost our stamina and strength. What a joy to have God whisper to us, don't worry, I will carry you through this last phase of your life, and I will gently transport you to the glory of heaven where you will never again hurt or experience weakness or be sad. When we understand how much God loves us, then we realize, you know what? My life has meaning. It's got a purpose to listen to you, dear Lord, Tell me how much you love me. And then to tell others how much you love them. Life, I don't care what phase you're in, it's awesome. It's awesome because it's a gift that God has given to us originating with him. It's awesome because God has given us a tremendous purpose in this life to listen to his word and be saved, to share his word so that others can be saved. When we understand the origin, when we understand the purpose, then God will lead us to really appreciate every human life. Amen. Please rise.